All right, the day is finally here. We're gonna be doing perfect Vanos timing. Today is the day that all your precision preparation work is gonna pay off. All right, we're gonna start by installing the cam gears or the sprockets, then the exhausted intake hubs, and then we're gonna be getting into the timing portion. To get that perfect timing, you need to install the helical gears that go into the exhausted intake hubs at just the right position. If you play with your Vanos at all, you'll notice that the helical gears that go in the exhaust and intake hubs slide in and out, and they do this to advance and retard the cams at different RPMs. Okay. If they're installed in the wrong position, they won't have full travel, whereas if you install them in the right position, they'll be able to go in and out further from the intake and exhaust hubs, and that's going to give you full advancement and retardation of the cams, and therefore a better performance. If your car is one that tends to flatten out at 6,000 RPMs, this is one place to start looking. All right, now that you have a general overview, we're gonna show you how to get your timing right on the money every time. All right, now we're gonna put the exhaust cam gear in. So I'm gonna unclamp this to make it a little easier. Okay, this is a chain tensioner. It's oil filled. It's got a little spring to it. See the oil coming out right here in this little port? Uh, don't squeeze it all out. But this is what actually keeps the chain tight inside your engine. And we're going to install this. You can't see it because it's way back, way back underneath all this mess here. But we're going to torque this down uh, to 51 foot pounds when we get it in. But we're going to take it down just tight enough to crush that washer. Make sure it seals up because that's your oil seal. Okay, now we're time to put the, uh, the exhaust and intake hubs back on so that we can time it. Okay, we have uh, two parts here that go inside the new hub. I want to show you the old one first. You see this outer ring here, the shiny ring? That's a wear mark and it's coming off of this spring washer. And this is what puts the tension on the, uh, on the cams. Like so. Here's the other wear mark on the washer, that the backing washer. It goes right here. And there's these two little nubs go right inside there. Now, this new hub is ready to go back together. So if in the process of taking this apart, you dump these over, don't panic. You can see how it goes back in. Ready to go. Okay, there's also a letter A embossed on this spring washer. So that goes on the outside, you can see that. And again, this washer, you gotta keep them together if you're using the same ones, because they're worn together now, they're mated. Okay, this is ready to go into the, into the unit, onto the cam. Okay, hold them together because you don't want to drop anything down in here. You want to cover yourself up. They stay it on, make sure nothing flips out. And it just slides right in there. There it is. Should rotate free. All right, now you need to bolt it down. Okay, when we originally took this apart, uh, we took a straight edge across the two lugs here and made a line over here on the block to just get myself in the right area of where this should go. And here we go. This will rotate. So right there, we're real close to where we need to be. Okay, this is the uh, ring that's free floating behind this cam sprocket that you're actually gonna be bolting into uh, with the hubs. So we're gonna align that right there. And you're gonna see the bolt come through. You see the bolt coming through that hole right there, right there. And now the hub is mounted with one bolt, but it can still turn freely. You see how, how much it'll turn, about 30 degrees. Okay. I'm going to put the rest of the bolts in and just finger tight. 
just to get that ring aligned properly. Okay, we're gonna take the hub now, since we got these bolts in, but they're just finger tight. Don't pull them down or you won't be able to move it. And we're gonna turn this all the way clockwise till it bottoms out. That's how much it moves, about 30 degrees. It's bottomed out. I've already pre-adjusted this and I've made some marks. I take this, this gear, this would actually set your timing. I've made some marks already that I'll show you how to do to find the sweet spot. If you read anything about sweet spots, we're gonna show you how to do it. If you can see this black mark right here on this gear, this helically cut gear, it's gonna mate into here. And you'll see that we move this hub very little to make that go in. I'll do it again. It's very slight. Right here, I'm gonna take my fingers and move this hub just a little bit, and there it is. And it goes all the way in. You see how much travel we get. We get a lot of a lot of depth and a lot of movement out of this cam gear right here. I'll show you what happens if you choose the wrong tooth. Okay, it's all the way clockwise. I'm gonna spin this around. And watch how much I have to turn the hub now to mate up. Right there, that's a lot. Look how much motion we get. Next to nothing. Right here, that's the motion we're looking at. I'll show you one more time. All the way to the right. And now watch how much I have to move this hub to make it up with that helically cut gear. Look at that. It's a lot of movement. About three eighths of an inch movement on the radius. And that's how much movement we get inside as compared to when we do it with a sweet spot. If you've read about sweet spots, that's what we're doing right now. Okay, we got my black tick mark on the helically cut gear. I'm gonna move it just a little bit right there. And that's how much it goes in. You get full travel and easy, easy movement. That's the sweet spot. Theoretically, this should make your car perform better and basically have a, a better RPM range in your power band. It's never gonna go flat. So if you want a good running car, you better get this timing perfect like this. Okay, now we're gonna put on the intake hub and do the same thing. Okay, here's your spring washer, conical spring washer. A is up. Look at the wear marks on your backing ring right there. Down she goes. And it lines up with, with the holes here. Okay, now, before we tore down, we took the liberty to make some marks. Here's a mark I made on the chain. Here's a mark I made on the hub. So the hub's going back on the way it came from the factory. Right there. That's the marks we made, and we had this one being straight up. And we can take that plate. I can show you that real quick if you like. You can see how this plate back here just spins freely. So don't worry about trying to get that lined up until you actually get this thing put together. Make sure it all is in there. Nice and free. Bring that mark up that we made. Here's our mark. Here's our mark on the chain that's vertical. And just finger tight. All these bolts are finger tight. Okay, go ahead and put the rest of the bolts in, just finger tight so that we can do the rest of our timing before we really torque it down. Okay, we got the, the intake hub on now. Now we're gonna put the new intake spline gear that we got to hook up that cam. So Okay, we've got the new gear and the intake shaft size right here is shorter than the exhaust. That's one of the things you gotta pay attention to. There are two different gears here. They look the same, but this is different. There's, this one's shorter on the intake. Exhaust is longer. Okay, we're gonna find the sweet spot on this guy. This goes all the way clockwise, bottoms out. And let's see what we got. See how much I have to turn this.
to make those teeth line up. Quite a bit. Not much, not much there. Not much travel not like much, we want. Not much travel. Let's go another, uh, two more teeth over because every time you do this, it goes two teeth. That's a little better. And this is our sweet spot. It's all the way over and right in. If you, if you notice, fully clockwise, and didn't have to turn it at all. Push it all the way in. Push it straight in. That goes bottoms out. It's all the way in. And that's the sweet spot on the intake. Okay, before you bolt this thing all together, you want to make sure that the oil holes on the hub are facing up. So those two. Okay. Okay, now that you got the sweet spots on those cams, we're gonna go ahead and go over the checkpoints that you should be making sure to take note of. Okay, here's our checkpoint. We've got the hub rotated all the way to the right, all the way to the right. We have our sweet spot marked on the hub. We have our sweet spot marked on our gear, marked on the hub, marked on the gear. And as you can see, the oil hole is up like we discussed before. And the, the two dogs right here that hole that, that go into the um, the Vanos oil pump plate, they're laying parallel with the floor. So get all those marked, and we're actually going to be pulling these two cam these spline gears out. All right, now that you figured out where exactly to install your helical gears into the intake and exhaust hubs, we're going to continue in the next video by installing the Vanos itself. If you're enjoying our videos so far, please like and subscribe.